Hello, and welcome to Art of the Steel's video for top five art crimes. These are my personal favorite crimes, and I will be counting down starting with number five. If you find this video interesting, please like, comment, and share, and also visit my blog, which is linked below in the description. Okay, so let's get started with number five, Edvard Munch's The Scream, which was involved in two thefts, one in 1994 and again in 2004. In 1994, on February 12th, two men broke into the National Gallery in Oslo and stole their version of the scream. The thieves left a note in the gallery saying, thanks for the poor security, and the following month demanded a ransom of $1 million to be paid, which the gallery refused. The Norwegian police set up a sting operation with the assistance of the British police and the Getty Museum, and the painting was recovered on May 7th, 1994. In August of 2004, during the day, mass gunmen entered the Monk Museum in Oslo and stole the scream and Monk's Madonna. The paintings went missing for two years. In August of 2006, Norwegian police had announced that they had recovered both paintings, but not much else is known. Moving on to number four. This painting of Adele Block Bauer, along with two other works in this video, were involved in the major widespread art theft of World War II. In 1941, it was stolen by the Nazis along with other works belonging to Ferdinand Blockbauer, Adele's husband. Ferdinand passed away in 1945, leaving his estate to his nephews and niece. They tried to recover the stolen works after his death, but the Gallery Belvedere based its claim on retention of the works based on Adele's will. In 1998, the Austrian government introduced the Art Restitution Act, an Austrian investigative journalist undertook extensive research in the newly opened archives and published a story about the theft of the art by the Nazis. With the subsequent refusal of the Austrian state to return the art or to acknowledge a theft had taken place, he described the situation as a double crime. Maria Altman, the niece of Adele and Ferdinand, hired a lawyer, Randall Schoenberg, to act on her behalf. In 2006, after several years of fighting for the return of the stolen paintings, the Austrian Supreme Court ruled that five of the six paintings in question should be returned to the Blockbauer estate, including the portrait of Adele Blockbauer. If you're interested, this story was turned into a movie titled Woman in Gold, starring Helen Mirren and Ryan Reynolds. Okay, number three, the Ghent altarpiece by Hubert and Jan van Eyck. This altarpiece has been stolen multiple times, but I'm just going to focus on the events that occurred after World War I. In 1934, two panels, the Just Judges and St. John the Baptist, were stolen. The St. John the Baptist panel was returned soon after, but the Just Judges panel has never been recovered. A Belgian art restorer, Jeff van der Vecken, produced a copy of the Just Judges as part of an overall restoration effort. At the start of another conflict in 1940, a decision was made in Belgium to send the painting to the Vatican to keep it safe. The painting was en route to the Vatican in France when Italy declared war as an access power alongside Germany. In 1942, Hitler ordered the painting to be seized and brought to Germany to be stored in a Bavarian castle. After Allied air raids made the castle too dangerous for the painting, it was stored in a salt mine. In 1945, the altarpiece was returned from Germany after spending much of World War II hidden in a salt mine which greatly damaged the paint and varnish. This subject is covered in the movie The Monuments Men. On to number two. The Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci was begun around 1513 and never finished. During the last years of da Vinci's life, he moved to France, taking the Mona Lisa with him, and he died in 1519. It was acquired by the King of France, Francis I, and is now property of the French Republic itself, on permanent display at the Louvre Museum in Paris since 1797. On the 21st of August, 1911, the painting was stolen from the Louvre. The missing painting was first noticed the next day. It was taken by Louvre employee Vincenzo Perugia, who had helped construct the painting's glass case. He carried out the theft by entering the building during regular hours, hiding in a broom closet, and walking out with the painting hidden under his coat after the museum had closed. Perugia was an Italian patriot who believed that Leonardo's painting should have been returned to an Italian museum. After having kept the Mona Lisa in his apartment for two years, Perugia grew impatient and was caught when he attempted to sell it to Giovanni Paggi, director of the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. It was exhibited in the Uffizi Gallery for over two weeks and returned to the Louvre 
on January 4, 1914. Perugia served six months in prison for his crime. And now for my number one personal favorite, the story of Han Van Meegren. This is a little different than the other crimes listed in this video, and that's why I think this story is so fascinating. Van Meegren was a Dutch painter who was obsessed with Dutch Golden Age painters, so much so that he wanted to become one. Many critics of his work called him derivative and unoriginal, and he felt that these criticisms had damaged his career. So to prove the critics wrong, he started to forge paintings of the Dutch masters. His most successful forgery was the Supper at Emaus, which he claimed was painted by Vermeer. The painting was accepted as a Vermeer and Van Meegren sold it to the Rembrandt Society for millions of dollars. During the German occupation of the Netherlands, one of Van Meegren's agents sold the Vermeer forgery Christ with the Adulteress to Nazi banker and art dealer Aloys Meidel in 1942. Meidel then sold it to Hermann Goering. Goering hid his collection of looted artwork, including Christ with the Adulteress in an Austrian salt mine, along with thousands of other pieces of artwork looted by the Nazis. On May 17, 1945, Allied forces entered the salt mine where they discovered the previously unknown Vermeer. The Allied forces questioned banker and art dealer Aloys Meidel regarding the newly discovered Vermeer. Based on Meidel's confession, the painting was traced back to Van Meegren. On May 29, 1945, he was arrested and charged with fraud and aiding and abetting the enemy. He was sent to prison as an alleged Nazi collaborator and plunderer of Dutch cultural property, threatened by the authorities with the death penalty. He eventually confessed to forging paintings attributed to Vermeer and Peter de Hooch. So to prove himself innocent of treason, Van Meegren was put on trial and had to prove himself guilty of forgery. Van Meegren then had to paint one of his forgeries in court to display exactly how he made his fake paintings. He was found guilty of fraud and forgery and only sentenced to one year in prison. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more content like this, please visit my blog, which is linked below.